Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to invite you to, to stand. My name is Bill. Um, for those of you that are regular, you know Noah as our awesome worship leader. Well, he had his wisdom teeth and some others, I think, ripped out of his head a few weeks ago, and he's still healing. But uh, Carrie Blado, our awesome secretary, is kind of the backup worship leader, and she got ill the uh, day before yesterday. So you get third string, and, uh, and that's, even a, uh, that's even a stretch. So I brought my sweet wife, got my big kiddos, Linda and Josh, too, helping. So I'll need you just to sing regardless of how things go here. But uh, let's, let's open in prayer and, uh, and turn our hearts towards the Lord. Father, we're thankful to be here this morning. We love you. We thank you for this opportunity to be your church, your people. Uh, we look to glorify your name. Thank you for the richness of the words in which we are singing, and may they impact our hearts. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Liam, why don't you start us out? <laughs> i 
going to uh, kick off our Advent season. And that family that's kicking off Advent, I believe, is I'm looking at Becca. All right. Awesome. Come on up. Welcome the Warnke family. Oh, that's weak. Let's... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 3, verses 4 and 5-ish. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain hill shall be made low and the crooked shall become straight. And the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Isaiah 9, 2. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shined. Today we light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope, as we look with longing for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We wait with great hope. Are those who dwell in deep darkness, but praise be to God who sent his own Son to break into our darkness as the sun breaks over the hills in the blazing glory of dawn.
At the coming of Jesus, salvation has dawned on those who have walked in darkness. Okay, now please join us in singing Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. You can stand if you'd like. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. Strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart, joy to those who long to see thee, spring from. I have a few announcements this morning, quite a few. Hopefully I get all the details straight. But there's four announcements. Two of them have to do with Christmas. Two of them have to do with missions, which I thought, that's perfect. Because in Christmas, we see Jesus as the ultimate missionary leaving heaven to be born as a baby in Bethlehem to save a people for God from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And so... Um, The first announcement has to do with the Women's Ornament Exchange. So that is December 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Ladies, bring a wrapped ornament to exchange with the other ladies there and also bring an appetizer or a dessert. And that's at 6.30 on December 3rd. We also 
Um, the other Christmas announcement was Advent bags. You probably saw the table out front with bags like this. And so Valerie's put together this project this year, which is, I think, a huge blessing. It's just a, a, a tool, a help for us to make Jesus a central part of our Christmas traditions. I'm sure many of you have your own traditions that do that for your families already, which is wonderful. This is just a tool for you to use. Um, it has a, sh a packet in there with ideas for Advent and how to celebrate as a family. There's lots of goodies and, and different little things in there. So each family gets to take one bag off the table in the back. Um, you'll see a page inside that has a star on it with instructions. And one of the parts of this is to bless each family in the church, that you can have a tool for making Jesus central in your Advent traditions. But the other is for outreach and blessing those around us. And so um, the idea is that if you take one bag for your family, there's also another packet in there for, and a help for, for you to prepare another bag or pack to give to a neighbor. So we're hoping to get this all over the place, all over Yakult. It explains in there about stars, and if you've given to someone or received one, you're, you can put the star out on your door so people, you don't double up and give one person two packs. But I think some people will, will do that, and it'll be a big help, and, and others might not. But the goal is to bless as many people as possible. So I'm just excited to see what the Lord wants to do through Yakult Church to bless this community this Christmas. So make sure you grab one of these bags before you go. And then on to the missions announcements. Um, the first is these packs of Christmas cards. You've probably seen the missions tree out there on the table with packs of cards like this. There's still a whole bunch of them out there, so make sure you grab them and write Christmas greetings to our missionaries around the world. There's a card for each missionary in the pack. And so you can just write a greeting to each one to bless them this Christmas. And if you wanted to include a monetary gift to them, don't put it in the card, put it in the, the gift box on the table because the missions committee will, will separate it between all of the missionaries and give them all a gift and an even gift among all the missionaries this Christmas. So there's still a bunch of cards. Make sure to grab those and that we can bless them as much as po possible. And, I just have to say, being on the receiving end of this each year, it's so fun to get a pack at Christmas time or, or sometimes a little after if it got held up in the mail somewhere around the world. But to just see that the church body is holding them up in prayer and loves them, that's a huge blessing. The last announcement is that we have a missions movie night tonight at six o'clock at the church. Um, we're doing a, a mini missions week this week for the youth group. So this is a youth-sponsored event, but it's open to anybody who wants to come. Um, the Ends of the Earth is a new f documentary film about missions aviation pilots in Papua, Indonesia, um, trying to reach unreached tribes all over the islands. And so it's really fascinating. It's well done. Um, it's just out. So there is a suggested donation of $10 a person, but we don't want that to keep anyone from coming. So if it would, just come and show up. We're not charging for the youth. Um, so youth are invited free of charge. And that's tonight at 6 o'clock here at the church. So we're going to move on to prayer requests. Um, we have a couple... I'll do the prayer family of the week first. It's the Waters, Chris and Sam Waters and their kids, and they have... Um, just praise their requests are a praise that the Lord has blessed their family with friends and family and friends in Christ and they pray that the Lord would be their rock as they try to follow him and raise their children well and so we'll pray for those things for that family and we know also they've been a huge blessing to our church body as well now we have a couple the missionary of the month is the persecuted church. Not exactly a missionary, but there are persecuted believers all over the world that we want to lift up and remember. We had two special requests this morning. One was from Julia. Her daughter Kathleen and her climbing partner Oscar got lost in the mountains in California last night as they were climbing. And um, they were stuck and being recovered by, by a helicopter I just heard from Tandy before service that they were picked up finally by the helicopter, but last they heard, 
her daughter had hypothermia and they were waiting for them at the ER. So they're on their way to the ER. We just pray for them for um, recovery and thanks that they were found. And then Kathleen Rinta handed me a request this morning for the Jolma family, for Troy and Angie Jolma. They lost their son, Kelton Jolma, who was a third grader at Yakult Elementary School who died in an accident on Thanksgiving evening at their home. So we'll lift th that family up as well and pray for the, the um, Apostolic Lutherans community in general, I think, because there's been so many losses and car accidents in different ways this year already. So why don't you all join me in lifting these things up? Father, we thank you that you are God over all creation. Jesus, that all things are upheld by the word of your power. That you stepped down from heaven and cr crossed cultures. You became the first and ultimate missionary to come to this world and be born as a baby. That we might be brought back to God. That our sins might be forgiven. That we might, you might call a people for God and purchase a people for God from every tribe and tongue and nation. And we just pray that you continue to do that work, Jesus, through your missionaries. We lift up the persecuted church all over the world, brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith, whether they're threatened or find themselves in prison or watched and s under surveillance, whether they've lost family members who have been taken away from them. We lift them up and ask you to do a work of grace in their hearts this morning, all who are being persecuted and live under that kind of pressure, that they would find joy in you and peace, even in the midst of horrific circumstances. Holy Spirit, draw near to them and make yourself known and comfort them with your presence and with the presence of other brothers and sisters around them. Um, those who are isolated in prison or other places and have no fellowship with other believers, we just pray for that you would sustain them um, with your spirit and that you would speak to them truth and the word of God and bring it to mind and, and just keep them, Lord. We pray for all our missionaries all over the world who are laboring to make you known among various people groups and among people who have not heard of you before. And we pray that you would provide for all their needs and bless them this Christmas and be near to them and sustain them in their work, Lord. Pray for the waters, lift up the waters family, Chris and Sam, that you, we, we praise you that you have provided godly family and friends around them, make them a light in this community, continue to work in their family and give them wisdom as they raise their children to fear you and honor you. So just ask your blessing on this family. And Lord, we lift up these other families, we lift up the Jolma family and that you would be a, a close comfort to them with the loss of their son. And just pray that you would just cause them to call out to you and to depend on you and to find their comfort in you, Jesus. And we pray for the apostolic church in general as a whole, that you would just do a work of grace in that community, that you would cause them just to, to know their need, the gospel of Jesus, the grace of God, and do a, an awesome work in that community. And we pray that you'd continue to work comfort among those who have lost children and teenagers in car accidents and, and continue to comfort them and draw near to them, Lord, and provide for all of their needs. And Lord, we, we praise you that you answered the prayers of many and caused Kathleen, Julia's daughter, to be found, her and her friend Oscar, to be found in the mountains and pray that she would receive the care she needs at the hospital, that you would heal her of any hypothermia and different effects from being lost overnight and um, just take care of them, provide for them, give good health service wherever they're at. And we, th we praise you that they're found and thank you for that. Now bless our time this morning as we fix our eyes on you and may you be the center of our worship and the center of our Advent season and all of our celebrations. We just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to dismiss you to a time of fellowship so you can refill your coffee, say hello to the people next to you, and we'll be back here in a few minutes. I'd invite you to find your places again so we can continue in our worship service.
Pastor Bill's going to talk about fasting this morning. I like the E added to fasting, which is feasting. We had that this past week, didn't we? And now the Christmas season is upon us. It's such a wonderful time of year for the church to celebrate as the church. As we think about the birth of Christ central to our faith, and as we're reminded through the decorations around us of the beauty of the season. I want to talk to you a little bit uh, this morning about the Moving by Faith uh, project that we uh, undertook last week. Many of you were here, and we invited you to fill out one of these commitment sheets. Uh, as we have set a goal of raising $600,000 between now and November of next year for the purpose of continuing our Moving by Faith project. We... Uh, are moving along. You haven't seen much dirt moving lately. Chris tells me it's because it's too muddy, but there are things going on. Don't think that the project has stalled, and here within a few weeks, we expect to see the structural steel arrive and uh, be parked somewhere on the property and be ready for putting it up when uh, we're able to finish the prep on the site later in the spring. So we need to uh, keep the project moving forward, and uh, as a part of that, we provided opportunity to fill out these sheets. 42 people uh, filled out and submitted one of these. We're thankful for that. And uh, we also know that there were some folks who took the, the commitment sheet with them to uh, pray about and to consider through the week. We also know that perhaps some of you weren't here last week with the uh, holidays, some travel. So we want to make the opportunity available again this morning. If you did not get one of these last week, and would like to receive one, I just invite you to hold up your hand, and the ushers will bring uh, one of these around for you. If you took one last week and filled it out and have it with you this morning, you can raise your hand as well, and the ushers will receive that from you to, uh, uh, to forward it in so we can add your commitment to the total. We're uh, very pleased with what the Lord is doing already as we've seen the results so far. We believe it's premature to report uh, what's occurred thus far yet. We want to give everybody an opportunity to take part. So uh, if you just receive this, it comes with an envelope. Just uh, fill it out, fold it up, put it back in the envelope, and then you can uh, return it uh, before you leave today to one of the ushers or to the church office. Thank you all for your uh, support in this matter. God has really shown himself mighty thus far in our Moving by Faith project, and we believe that he will continue to do so until the day comes when we will be meeting not in this room, but in a room on our large property on the edge of town to continue the ministry that he's placed in our hands. Now, you taught preachers to preach for 40 plus years, correct? There had to have been something in there about not stealing the topic from the preacher before he gets up to introduce it himself. No? All the rules that apply in class don't apply to son-in-law. I think that's what it comes down to. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, right before we get to, we're going to be in Ezra chapter 8, and I'm not going to give a long announcement. We also last week had a business meeting. Those of you who are here, we, we did some voting on some officers and some budgetary things. Uh, that was glowing success, 100% um, of affirmation, 198, 190, and then the rest were like 97 or 97 percent whatever a strong sense of unity in the church moving forward so thank you for your participation um, if you're a member you'll get an email today with our 2021 budget um, for the congregational approval uh, we're gonna have a meeting between services on the 12th just to approve the budget or to to vote on the budget for next year so uh, enough of that um, businessy stuff. Um, more importantly, we want to pray, and very specifically, um, we we have a number of things to, to pray for. Um, primarily, the, the number one, we want to pray for, pray for um, the the family. We most of you know by now that we lost a dear friend, grandma, um, beloved uh, sister in Christ, friend, Grandma Sammy. This last week, Samantha Fox. She passed away early this last week. And uh, we just want to lift up the family because it, there's, there's ripples that affected um, many, many people in our body. We want to pray for, pray for her beloved stork. 
um, and as well as her son Spencer and Danielle and Olivia and Barrett and Kimber, as well as Shelby and his family. Um, and then the rest of you that knew Grandma Sammy is Grandma Sammy, who had uh, an incredibly huge, gracious, loving heart. And, um, and uh, I could say more, but we just want to pray for them. And we're thankful that um, we're able to be together to support and encourage each other, but are also thankful that she's at home with the Lord um, as well. So um, on, a, on another note, we have a praise. All of us have been praying for uh, Anthony Waring. Uh, he was moved to a rehab facility this past week from the hospital to the rehab facility. Um, and already there's seen um, improvement where he, he was able to kiss Angela. Um, he recognized, yeah, it's huge, it's huge praise. He was able to recognize her. Um, he responds to his voice. That's far more than he's done the last um, six to eight weeks in his coma. So very encouraging. Keep up in your prayers for him. Let's, let's pray together. Father, again, we look to you as we turn to your word. We, we thank you for the strength that we find from it. We thank you that we're not um, an utterless ship amongst a stormy sea, but we have um, you as our anchor. We pray, Lord, for um, the family of, of Grandma Sammy. Uh, we pray for beloved Stork as well as Spencer and Danielle, the, the kids, Shelby, his family, um, and all of us here who are grieving um, her not being with us, especially this time of year. But Lord, we thank you uh, that she's with you. And we pray that only you would, you would bring only what you can bring, which is true comfort and peace um, and graciousness. Um, let us continue to remember to keep them in our prayers as we walk through this season. And Lord, we also just thank you for what you're doing in Anthony. And uh, we pray for continued healing in him. Um, you've already done more than what the doctor said he was going to be able to do. And we just trust you that you would continue to bring about a healing in his life. And this we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. The book of Ezra. Okay, Ezra chapter 8. Ezra chapter 8. So... 12 plus years ago, I had a great opportunity to go to Sierra Leone, Africa, and that's a big step for me. I don't like leaving Yakult, so um, going to Africa was pretty, pretty huge, and uh, it was an opportunity to do a follow-up on a church uh, plant, that, the church where I was a youth pastor, they did this church plant. We were going then to now establish a school in the church plant, and we were going to bring some training to the, the teachers and the volunteers in the church there. And we, we spent a lot of months preparing for this. So lots of preparation went into the, the, the trip. I mean, first off, save thousands, I think, I don't know how many thousands of dollars it was just to make the travel. Uh, I remember uh, having to get in the course of one day seven different inoculations for like typhoid and all of the things that are going to kill me when I'm there. Uh, also, all of the um, preparations for the materials that we were going to take. Um, just the logistics of getting from here to there was really, really complex, uh, all kinds of stuff. We got, we got ready for their culture, kind of preparing ourselves for what it was going to be like to have that culture shock, all of these things. Um, and so we embarked on the, the journey. We actually flew from Portland to Atlanta, and in Atlanta, we got on a plane to go to Ghana. And what was funny about this, it was really cool, was when we, we got on the plane, um, there about 75% of this big plane were... Um, were convicts that um, were native Ghanans that were being released from American jails and put on the plane first thing and then all sent back to Ghana. 75 percent, that's like 100 more people. It was like a party. If you could just imagine all these people that were been in, in, in American jails and now they're being sent home, they were so excited and it was kind of interesting, but that's beside the point. Um, fun, made the trip not be feel like it was 18 hours in the, in the plane. Um, it landed in Ghana, then we took a puddle jumper to another ferry, a ferry to cross to a free town, got on a four by four, went in the bush, and then got on foot and went further into the bush, and there we were. And all this preparation went into that, and, and yet with all the preparation we did, there was something I was just not prepared for, and that's what Pastor Daniel, Pastor Daniel was the native, being colon Sierra Leonean pastor that, that um, ran the church that was planted. And um, he says, the very first thing we're going to do, Pastor Bill, is we're going to, and that's bad. Um, um, <laughs> it didn't sound at all like that. But um, he, he did say, we're going we're gonna to spend 24 hours in fasting and prayer. And, and it was like, 
oh, okay. You know, I tried to act like that's no big deal. He spoke of it like it was a pretty normal thing, and we did. We spent 24 hours fasting in, in prayer amongst all of those at the church and those who, of us who went. And uh, after it was done, it was just a, a really special, um, really special time. But uh, he came up and I asked him, I, so like, how often do you do this? And he says, well, pretty much any time we have a real need. And our, our purpose for this fast was to pray for the, the launch of this school, this Christian school. And, and, uh, and he says, so we, we do it as often as we have a need. And I go, well, like, don't you always have needs? Isn't? He goes, yeah, it's, you know, we do it two, three, sometimes more every month. And then he looked at me and he asked a question that I was praying he would not ask. He said, what about my American brothers and sisters? How often do you guys fast and pray? <laughs> um, let's change the subject. Uh, it's not something that we do. He was shocked, um, especially because um, in, in Africa, especially, there, there has become, a, a, sadly, the, the prosperity gospel um, has gotten entrenched in African theology, even in churches that are planted by non-prosperity churches. So they basically have been taught that if you have money, that means God is happy with you. And if you are sick or, or, or poor, then you're really not godly, which, of course, is not biblical at all. Um, but that kind of trickled in, and so they really elevate us, and, and, and he was shocked to hear that, that really this isn't a discipline that the church in America does anything with. And he asked the question, so he was like, what do you do when you have real need within your, your body, within the church? So with that being said, I know today I'm talking about something that, first off, it's not a Christmas message. Uh, where does it fit? Especially a lot of us are going through difficult seasons right now um, in, in many different senses. Um, so how does this fit in? Is this um, insensitive to talk about fasting coming into this time of year? Well, first off, I just go through the text. So I'm coming to, to Ezra chapter 8, and we're going to be in 21 through 23. So I don't really have a lot of control over that. But I do think it's probably pretty appropriate to talk about fasting just from a physiological standpoint, right after Thanksgiving. I think we all could probably benefit from a little fasting after this week. All right, dumb joke. So let's turn to our text. Let's focus on um, this topic of fasting. And before I read, I just want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to think um, hard about fasting this week. As an application point, I'll give specifics as we close. But I want to challenge every single one of us in here. Uh, to seriously consider and to apply this message or this charge to fast this week. We'll talk specifically about um, the different facets of fasting, uh, but um, that is a, a, a tough challenge for us um, who, who really, in our culture, worship comfort. Um, and, and yet there is something special that, that um, God has for those that certainly fast. And, and we'll talk about that as we go on. Now let's read, we're going to read in verse 21 through 23. And before we do, remember this context. The Israelites have been stuck, held captive in Babylon by the Persians for 70 years. And God, um, through his gracious hand, used a pagan king, Cyrus, to allow the Jews to head back to Jerusalem to rebuild their temple which their temple had far more sacredness to them than a church building would have to us. It was, they really couldn't worship God without the hub of their temple, without their temple. And so they'd been 70 years without. So 50,000, they're only 50,000 of the million plus Jews took the call and went to Jerusalem to rebuild uh, the city. It took them 20 years to rebuild the city. Uh, we saw that in chapters 1 through 6. Uh, it actually didn't take them 20 years. It only took them 4 years, but they drug their feet for 16 years because they lost focus. God used Haggai and Zechariah, the, the minor prophets, to kick them in the rear and get them back engaged. They finished the, the building of the temple. And then there's this Transition from chapter 6 going into chapter 7, and you can't see it if you're just doing a quick reading, but there's a 58-year gap that is right there. And in that 58-year gap, lots is going on in the world, but the most important thing for our story was God was preparing a man, and his name was Ezra, 
Um, Ezra spent that time growing in his love and his worship of God, memorizing the Bible and and studying it. Um, And he was going to need that time to help lead the second wave of Israelites from Babylon down to meet the others that already went. But the purpose wasn't to rebuild the temple. That was already done. The purpose that God used Ezra to bring them out was to reestablish or to rebuild the people and specifically to rebuild them theologically. They had lost their way and they needed to return to the Lord. And so God uses Ezra to bring these people. And so just before he takes off with these about 5,000 second wave of exiles, um, those are listed in the genealogy um, starting at chapter 8. And, uh, and then they're just about to take off, and that's where we get to our text today in verse 21 um, of chapter 8. So follow along as I read, and it says here. It says, then I proclaimed, this is Ezra, I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek him a safe journey, to seek from him a safe journey for ourselves, for our children, and all our goods. For I was ashamed to ask the king for a band of soldiers and horsemen to protect us against the enemy on our way, since we had told the king, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him, and the power of his wrath is against those who forsake him. So, verse 23 says, we fasted and we implored our God for this, and he listened to our entreaty. Great great passage that we see here. Um, And we're going to look at really just three different aspects of fasting that are pulled out in this passage. Now, before we talk too much about this, let me just simply say um, we have to think rightly about what fasting is. And first off, fasting is not a mechanism for us to just pull strings and get God to answer all of our prayers. Uh, Fasting isn't a guarantee that God will answer our prayers. Fasting has a much richer um, depth from God's perspective than that. And, and so be careful not to slip into that kind of thinking that, that um, if we do this, God will do that. Because that's called a theology of works. It's not a theology of grace. Um, we don't um, manipulate God. We don't get to pull strings like that. Um, but what we also have to remember is fasting is God's idea. Like it came from him. It didn't just kind of come out of the blue. It came from him. And so um, with that in mind, these are the three aspects, and we'll talk about it here. First off is there's this practice of fasting. And the thing I want to say about the practice of fasting um, was that this is common um, in our Christian story that goes back to the beginning. It's, it's littered throughout all of the pages of scripture, this practice of fasting that God instilled. And it didn't just put it there for no reason. I'm going to read a few. If you're in a growth group, you might want to write some of these references down. But for example, um, Exodus 34, verse 28, we see that when Moses went up to Mount Sinai to meet with God, he didn't eat bread. He didn't drink water. In Samuel 7, verse 5, he, he, they were being oppressed by the Philistine army, and so he sought the Lord's deliverance um, by fasting and praying to confess of their sins. It goes on, we'll see this in Nehemiah, we're going to hit this uh, subject again in the book of Nehemiah, where he went to the Lord in fasting and in prayer. Um, it's several times in the, the minor prophets, the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 12, we see this, where where the people fasted and prayed. And then let's step into the New Covenant, into the New Testament, into Luke. Now, Luke chapter 2, we see how this widow, Anna, she served the Lord. And one of the primary ways she served him was through fasting and for, through prayer. The most well-known uh, fast in Scripture, most likely, is from uh, the, the person in, of Jesus in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 4, we know that Jesus, he, before beginning his public ministry, he was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And he fasted there for 40 days and for 40 nights, it says, and then he became hungry. Uh, but it wasn't only Jesus who fasted the New Testament Um, believers, the apostles, there's many times where they fast throughout the scriptures. 
Um, and, and so for, for us, now, it was funny. Dr. Bob made mention um, about fasting early, and then he used the word feasting. It's so true. Um, I grew up conservative Baptist. We were known for our potlucks, not for our fasting. And, and that's many people um, in our culture today, especially a culture that worships comfort, which I think makes fasting even more beautiful as a discipline for modern day believers. But the question I'm going to ask multiple times as we, as we go through here is, have you ever practiced fasting? Have you uh, fasted before intentionally um, and specifically with a purpose, with a purpose in mind? Have you ever fasted? And if you have not, or if you have, will you consider, um, will you consider following the Lord's example as well as all of our brothers and sisters, and sisters in this special, special uh, discipline unto the Lord? So um, we see this practice of fasting all throughout Scripture. We see it as God's design um, and something that's been honored. So th- that's first off. Secondly, what we see is we see this attitude. This is probably fundamentally imperative to this practice, this discipline of fasting, and it's this, it's the, it's the attitude specifically that we would have towards fasting. And um, first and foremost, I talked earlier about it not being a mechanism of us getting God to do what we want him to do. Um, in the same way, this is not a proclamation of our spirituality. Like, we don't get, we don't fast with the attitude that I'm, super spiritual and God is super happy with me because I am going through this difficult thing. Um, Fasting is all about attitude and I've heard it, I've used it, the excuse like um, you know you you start to fast, you get a little hungry and all you can think about is doggone when is this going to be over with? I'm hungry. Um, That's not the attitude that should drive fasting. Um, The attitude that drives fasting is much different, and it's the attitude of humility. The very act of you saying, I am, and I'll say it the most common form, fasting is going without food. Um, In our context, it's not normally going without water, but it's going without food. Most often in in the biblical story, that's the, the most fundamental aspect of fasting. There are many other ways to fast. I'll mention those in a minute. Um, but fasting from food, and, and oftentimes for, for so many people, they'll say, well, I can't, I can't do this. I can't go without food. I get hangry, you know. Uh, it's, it's not a good thing. But remember, what fasting is, and we're going to talk about the purpose of fasting in the last one, but fasting is not for you. It's not, the purpose isn't about you. Fasting is what gets your eyes off of you. And it reminds you of what really matters. So in all cases, fasting has a focal point, something to fixate on. It would be wonderful for some of you, as I challenge you to to fast this week, to specifically, intentionally fast for Stork and for the Fox family who are mourning the loss of Sammy. Um, Specifically fast for that purpose. So every time you get a hunger pain, you don't think, oh, I got six more hours. Uh. No, you think, oh, wait, I'm fasting because I'm praying for them. Uh, 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 I'm, this is a reminder to get my eyes off myself and to dedicate prayer to, to them. And out of all of the spiritual disciplines, and there's a whole bunch of spiritual disciplines in the Christian life, this is the only one that really truly has a physiological effect on us. And so that, in, in essence, makes it even more beautiful and more powerful. But fasting has an attitude of humility. And so, yeah, we love comfort in our world and we love our food way too much. All the more reason why it is a time dedicated unto the Lord so that we can say, Lord, I'm putting this aside um, because I'm praying for my spouse. Or I'm putting this aside because I'm praying for my, my neighbor. Who, who is struggling and they don't know you. And um, Lord, I just, I need you to work in their life more than I need to have a Big Mac. I need you to work in this situation more than I need to stuff my face with more calories that I've already overdone my fitness pal app for the day. It's this, this concept of, of hum, humbling ourselves, humiliating ourselves for the purpose of something far bigger than ourselves, something that is God glorifying, uh, something that is uh, not about me, but about 
his ways, his kingdom, and, and the benefit of other people, which is what leads us kind of this, this last one, which is, again, the purpose. This is an important place to end. We're talking about the purpose of fasting. We see the purposes that were laid out here. Ezra tells us right there in our scripture. He says, he proclaimed this fast to seek from him a safe journey for us. They're about to go on a 900-mile journey with 5,000 people, men, women, and children. Uh, they want to, to make that journey safely. Um, he prays for our little ones. Um, it's awesome that they're praying for little ones back then because we need to pray for our little ones today that are so vulnerable to the attack of this culture that is looking to poach kids from, from God, from their parents, from many other things. Um, and then also for our possessions, for the things in which God has blessed us with that we are using for his glory. For them, it was on this trip down. They wanted to get down and to be able to set up their homes. They want their possessions to not be lost in a siege from the enemy like has happened so often in that time and day. So there's this purpose of fasting. And again, the purpose is not to proclaim how wonderful I am because I'm so self-disciplined that I don't eat food. Um, the purpose is for the, the glory of God. The purpose is for the, the benefit of him and others. Uh, the purpose is to bring about a Christ-centered result in a situation. That's the purpose of a fast. It's not about us. It's about whatever it is that God would be doing amongst us in others' lives. And, and so there's a lot of different ways that this can take place. Now, and I hear it, this is probably the number one thing I hear when people say, well, I don't fast. Um, I just, I can't because I have medical issues and I need, uh, I need to have a balanced diet. Well, that's, that's great. Not everyone can. I would say the majority of people actually can. It's amazing the, the healing benefits physiologically from fasting. Amazing. Um, but drug companies can't benefit from you fasting, so you don't hear about those. Okay, uh, that's the wrong direction to go. Um, um, but there are amazing physiological benefits to, to fasting, but not everybody can physically fast from food for a meal, for a day, for a three or a seven or a 21 or a 40-day fast. Not everyone can do that. Um, but everyone can fast, and so maybe you take the approach that Daniel took to a fast, you dedicate in your heart, you, you want to pray for someone, you want to dedicate your energies toward thinking about and, and seeing something accomplished in someone else's life, or maybe it's your own life. Maybe you're struggling with addiction or struggling with a, a sin that you can't seem to break out of that cycle. Whatever the case might be, you want to dedicate, you really want God to show up. You're not doing it to pull strings, but you really want God to, to, to intervene. Um, to infuse his spirit into a situation. Um, if, if that's the case, but you can't fast without move, then do the Daniel fast, which is just eat fruits and vegetables or shrink your portions or maybe push away from the table a little bit earlier. That would help me so much. Uh, but fasting is, is one of those things you don't have to just stop food. There's many different practical ways to fast. And I would say for us, Today, I'll just, I can only talk about us in this room because I'm only shepherding you. But I can say that um, if there is a non-food fast that we all should discipline ourselves to consider, it would be a technology fast. From, from all things technological or social media, and again, maybe it's a day, maybe it's um, half of a day, I don't know. Um, but ultimately, for so many of us, Technology is a functional savior. We don't think about our feelings. We don't feel our feelings because we deaden our hearts with distraction from a technological standpoint. And our kids are seeing it take place from us too. So maybe a, a technological fast would be another way if you can't fast from food or maybe both. Um, but that's just one aspect. Um, so for us, um, as we think about, as a church, as we go into uh, whatever the Lord has for us, um, would we think seriously about following our, our brothers and sisters who show a great deal more discipline and, and uh, maturity than we do in Africa, who fast and pray? Would we consider that for ourselves? 
for our church. I, I've challenged the growth groups. If you're in a growth group, one of the things I've asked for growth groups is that you would, as a growth group, find a way. You can read this in the questions in, in your bulletin there. But find a way as a growth group to hold each other accountable to fasting for something that would keep your Christmas season more Christ-centered, walking in peace, not getting swept up in the speed of distraction and cultural um, driven consumerism, but stay focused and central on Christ uh, as, as growth groups, but also for us. Now, there's a couple final things, just practical things about fasting. Uh, some of these things are just advice. Um, first off, don't be legalistic about fasting. Remember, this is about you and the Lord, your attitude towards the Lord. Um, so there's no, need, um, to, there's no need to be so stringent about this, about fasting, that uh, it, it becomes an impossible task for you. So um, don't be legalistic about it. Um, some people drink water. Some people do juice-only fasts. Just find a purpose, a Godward purpose to fast. Set it in your heart and then a, go after it. And don't worry about whether you're doing it right or not doing it right. Uh, the other thing is, to, many of you have never fasted before, and this is your first time, don't start out and do a three-day fast. Uh, or even a 24, maybe it's just one meal. Start slow, be realistic in this, but don't forget the attitude. Don't forget to humble yourself before the Lord. Um, don't forget to pick a, a God-honoring purpose for your fast to bring before the Lord. Um, another one I'll just say is, um, don't tell hardly anybody, but have somebody. Don't tell hardly anybody. Jesus talks about this in speaking of attitude. We don't fast like the hypocrites do. These were the religious people that would stand on the street corner and they would look horrible. They would look outwardly horrible like you feel inwardly. Because fasting isn't fun physically. And so they would make sure everyone knew that these righteous people were fasting. And so Jesus warned um, his disciples not to fast for the purpose of getting applause from men, um, the empty praise of other people. And so um, in this case, don't tell many people. Tell as few people as you possibly can, but have somebody that knows and maybe is willing to walk in it with you. Someone that can walk with you through a fast. There's someone that, in this church that has told me that if I ever fast, they want to know and they want to do it with me. So there's one person in this church. Um, and it's great because when, when one of the two of us really feel God is calling us to this, then um, the other one always says, all right, mm, okay. But there's some accountability. Um, and it just gives us a little bit more encouragement to, to, to carry through. So have somebody um, to walk through, but main, mainly most people shouldn't know. Um, last thing I'll, I'll say about fasting here is, first off, if, if you want to know what the key to heaven is, um, it's not fasting. It's none of the spiritual disciplines. There is only one key to heaven, and that is faith in the Lord Jesus. So fasting is a great practice. As a matter of fact, again, there's healing benefits to fasting. Everybody should fast. I think it's great. Um, but if you haven't trusted the Lord Jesus Christ with your salvation, if you haven't said, I'm not going to work or do anything to work my way to heaven, Lord, I re recognize that even my best attempts at living life perfectly still, in contrast to your holiness, is like filthy rags. And so, Lord, I give it up to you. Forgive me my sin. You're my king. I will follow you. I will place my faith in you. I'll trust in your grace. I trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's the key to heaven. And, and so, so fasting, it's a great thing, but it's nothing special in and of itself. It has to be rooted first in, in faith in the Lord Jesus. And the, the Lord Jesus in which we celebrate this time of year, the Lord Jesus with the warrant keys led us to, to look to here at Advent. And so if you haven't trusted the Lord Jesus, with your salvation, let that be the first step before you even think about fasting. Um, and, and with that, I'd like just to invite you, if you wouldn't mind standing, and uh, we're not going to close with a song today. Uh, we're just going to close with a prayer and, uh, and, and be released to go be with one another um, this week. Father, we just are thankful for, we're just thankful for one another. We're thankful for the support that we have 
Um, we, we thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to be lifted up when we need to by your word as well as by our brothers and sisters. And Father, I recognize that this is a topic that is not easy for us um, today, uh, at least in this context here. And uh, Lord, um, would you put upon our hearts um, areas in which we can, um, we can be more disciplined, uh, more joyfully disciplined to see you infuse transformation into situations in which um, we have fallen um, lazy at? And would you allow us to, um, as your church, um, bring glory and honor to you uh, as we take steps of faith and trusting you and steps of faith and and uh, fasting and praying for others and for your kingdom to come um, and your will to be done. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, you are dismissed.